So good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Tricia Gordon. I'm at the University of Virginia, and I'm facilitating today's teaching and learning call. It's Wednesday, June 21st, 2017. And we are going to sort of do a round robin for those of us who were at the Open Aperio Conference to share highlights that we saw. I mean, even for people who were there, we couldn't see everything that was going on. Um, so I'm sure that uh, we'll all have things to learn and, and new stuff to hear about. So. Uh, before we get started with that, uh, we usually have a minute or two devoted to announcements. So I wanted to check in and see if we have any announcements for today. I'm happy to start. Okay, thanks, Neil. Um, so let's see here. Uh, hopefully, all saw that the Sakai 12, Sakai 11.4 is out, which I don't think it was out the last time we had met. Um, so that's the latest release of Sakai's 11.4 uh, maintenance release. Um, Sakai 12, hopefully you all saw the announcement that the schedule for 12 is to have to cut the branch to a freeze target date of July 31st. Um, so that means like developers need to get their new features in and or at least let the core team know about new features maybe trying they're trying to get into 12. Um, I think I'm not sure that date's really realistic given vacations and some states of uh, different parts of Sakai 12, but um, trying to get momentum because we need to get uh, Sakai 12 branched as soon as possible in order to have a good chance of getting a release before the end of the year. Um, so that's like the main main thing there. Also, I want to mention Eli, uh, which I was uh, the Eli Conference, Edu Educause Learning Initiative, is in 2018 in New Orleans, uh, January, I think it's 28th to 31st or something like that. Um, and there's going to be some Aperio representation, and we're hoping that um, Aperio and Sakai schools will consider putting in proposals. Their proposal, I think their proposal process may have already opened or is opening shortly. Uh, not that we're expecting folks to put in um, proposals directly about Sakai or directly about Aperio tools. Uh, Eli is a very teaching and learning focused conference, but you could talk about you know problems that you've had in teaching and learning and how they might have been supported or helped to be solved through some of those tools like Sakai or other tools. So we're sort of hoping to have a big presence at Eli. Um, so I just wanted to kind of put that bug in people's ear to think about, you know, whether they might want to uh, put in a proposal for uh, presentation. Also, it's just a really, I went to it last year, I thought it was a really good conference. Um, it's much smaller than Educause. Educause to me is rather overwhelming. There are thousands of people, literally thousands. Uh, Eli is more in the hundreds. So I think maybe 600 people or so. So it's a much, a scale that's much more uh, digestible and uh, a lot more opportunities to network. Um, so that's my pitch for Eli. Cool. Uh, yeah. Does, uh, I'm just curious, is anybody on the call already planning to go? To the um, Educause Learning Initiative Conference? Oh, oh, so great. I'll put in the uh, link here for those who are wanting to learn more about it. Oh, and I guess I should mention Sakai Camp too. Mm. Um, Sakai mm. Camp, we because of Eli, we were uh, there was a discussion in the PMC. Um, there was some discussion about whether to uh, hold, you know, have the Sakai. The Sakai Camp has typically been in Orlando, and that's where it's going to be. It looks like again in 2018. Um, Sakai Camp is a fairly small. It's a combination of uh, both non-technical people, instructional designers, as well as technical people, and we get together and we have working sessions and have a lot of fun. Two years in a row, it's been a blast um, and got a lot of work done as well. Uh, we thought about whether to combine that with Eli and just thinking it through the logistics because we uh, it didn't seem like it was going to work. Um, it just seemed like it would be a lot to ask of people, you know, like. Yeah right to have back-to-back -back intensive conferences it just didn't seem like it so we're going to keep eli uh sakai camp in orlando but we're going to schedule it so it's not conflicting with eli and we don't have the final date on that yet it's probably going to be february ish and then we'll make oh, an really? announcement what's that okay i uh when i was sitting beside dr chuck um in one of our post-conference meetings 
he indicated January 27th looked like the yeah. date. Uh, except that what happened was that that turned out was when Eli is happening. Exactly oh, the same time. oh, okay. So there's a conflict. <laughs> Right, so that was the that was the other piece. Is there's a conflict between uh, okay. conflict between Eli and Sakai camp dates, and I don't think we're going to get the Educause Learning Initiative to change their dates for their conference um, <laughs> to accommodate <laughs> Sakai. So we're going to have to change our dates since we know we're going to have uh, several people, uh, you know, over at Eli, and and you know want to enable that. So yeah, that was our original date was uh, January twenty seventh. Um, ish, you know, right around then for Orlando, but we're okay. going to have to move out. And if you have any, if anyone has suggestions, maybe that's a good thing to get some community input on. I mean, I guess there's a super, I don't care about the Super Bowl. I guess one of one, Matt, I guess one person at least who typically comes to the Kai camp cares about the Super Bowl. So, <laughs> um, so I don't yeah. know if people have like, um, any, if they're thinking about coming to Sakai camp and you have a preference for dates around that time period, um, you yeah, know, it'd be good input. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Neil. And I think Louisa also has an update for us. Louisa, I muted your mic a little earlier. Um, so you'll have to enable it again. Um, thank you, Trisha. I unmuted my mic too early. Sorry about that. <laughs> no um, problem. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I just have a very quick announcement. Um, so it's been a very fun year with Atlas. So after the conference, uh, we asked the committee members and also other peer reviewers. Uh, we had a few people changing their roles in the committee. Um, because of family and the career uh, uh, choices and changes. So now we are looking for a new uh, co-chair and also new committee members. So if you guys, any of you are thinking uh, to participate, it's the Imperial Teaching and Learning Awards Committee. Um, if you want to join yourself, or you have someone to introduce or just nominate somebody, just uh, email me. I'd be happy to uh, reach out and see what we can do. So co-chairs, committee members, and also peer reviewer. Yeah, that's my quick announcement. Please join. Thank you. Thank you, Louisa. Uh, yeah, we, you might want to add your contact information in the Etherpad notes. That so it's there if people want it to get reach out to you. Oh, perfect. Oh, Neil asks a question. Do you have instructors, faculty on the Atlas group currently? Yeah, we have a couple of uh, uh, adjuncts. Uh, they are mostly designers and uh, te technical support person and also uh, a couple of administrators, um, not full-time faculty. Uh, we definitely welcome full-time faculty to join us. Neil, you have someone in your mind you want to recommend? I was just thinking, I, have you uh, have? Do you ever ask like the Atlas Award winners from the previous year or the current year? And um, they yeah, we did ask, um, but full-time faculty. Um, Usually, they are um, not aware of the Perio community. They just teach, right? So, um, not a lot of them uh, want to participate in the committee, but we will try harder this time to impress more full time faculty and, and ask them to join. I can, I can understand that. I can totally yeah. understand that. Yeah. Thank you, Lisa. Very helpful. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and I don't know if we want to start at the top of our list of people in the session um, to just go around and um, anyone who has updates or highlights from the conference that you'd like to share, um, and we can just um, do it that way. I know a couple of people signed up on the sign up sheet um, as well. So I know Tiffany. Thank you for signing up, and I see you're here, so that's great. And, uh, oh, Tiffany, great. You have an announcement? Go right ahead. 
Uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, put a plug um, for uh, a little bit of a JIRA triage for Samago um, that uh, I was trying to organize for next week. We've got seven people signed up already um, for one o'clock. Uh, this is a week from uh, Friday uh, to just sort of get started planning how we might tackle um, some of the tests and quizzes, um, JIRA tickets that are out there uh, in the Sakai project JIRAs. Um, there are about 830 of them. So it's, uh, it's quite intimidating. Um, but if we can get a large number of people, maybe we can make some, some good headway in organizing them and uh, sort of getting an idea of um, you know, what, what needs to be fixed still, because some of them are really old and uh and you know how how we might start go about doing that great yeah that's that's a big effort and i think this is a step to trying to tackle all those years so thanks for doing that tiffany organizing that and i assume you'll send out an announcement um a little closer to that date to um let folks know where the triage will take place and, and all the other details. Right. So I was going to wait um, maybe till tomorrow to fix the time. Uh, it's looking like 1 p.m. because we've got seven uh, participants for that. Well, eight, including me. Um, so uh, 1 o'clock on Friday the 30th. Um, so. Great. Thank you. All right, so actually, I uh, before we get started with our highlights round robin, um, Neil, I know you had a JIRA that you wanted to um, discuss, so do you want to talk about that? Okay, uh, I'll try and keep it short, um, and if uh, it looks like it needs more time, we could always uh, try and do it on the list or something or for next meeting. Um, yeah, so I put it in there. I can also paste it in the chat if that will be helpful. Um, it's a peer review issue, and the the question is, what you know, is this a bug or a new feature, and is it desirable? Because uh, it wasn't clear what the behavior should be. So to give you a summary, uh, right now, the way peer review works, if you're not familiar with it, is that you have an assignment, the instructor has a due date, and if you set if the instructor sets it up as a peer assignment, then they also set up a peer review date, which is after the due date. So when the due date of the assignment's done, that means all the students by that time are supposed to have submitted their assignments. Then it opens up the peer review period until such time as that peer review did hits. And then it's like, okay, you need to have completed your peer reviews by that, by that point. And um, the thing is that the, uh, the students are giving comments to each other during the peer review evaluation period. And I believe, if I'm, remembering, if I'm remembering this right, I may need to read it again myself, that the instructor gets to see the comments, but I don't think the students get to see the comments that their peer reviewers left because the date of the assignment is completely closed and they don't have access to see anything. So uh, I believe that's the issue here, but you might want to read it. It's only a couple paragraphs. So it says, during the peer review evaluation period, a student can submit an evaluation for a submission. After this has been submitted, there is no way to change the evaluation. This is problematic, especially in cases when a student may have erroneously graded a submission and cannot rectify it. The current workaround would be for the lecture. Oh, this may be a different one than I intended. Oh, well, here's a peer review issue. <laughs> uh, I was thinking of a different issue, but I saw a peer review and I saw a TL label on it. I thought this is it. So we'll just look at this one then. The current workaround uh, would be for the lecturer to remove the erroneous review. Then the student would need to email the lecturer to correct the review. Uh, lastly, the lecturer would need to go back and submission. Could the students be allowed to edit, retrograde, regrade the evaluations they submitted? So that sounds like a different feature than the one I was I was thinking about. Let me see if I can find the one I was thinking about. Um, that's pretty funny. Let's There's see. There's one that, that is a link to that one. Um, uh, if you are under the issue links yeah. that's related to maybe that's the one you were thinking. Yes, that's the one. Right. So sorry about that. Let me put that uh, on the teaching and learning thing here. Right. That's the one I actually intended. The 30122. Yeah. 
that's the one I was thinking about, I think. And so um, Louisa writes, peer review has bugs. Well, if it does, uh, Louisa, if there's any bugs that are not in the in JIRA, please report them. Um, uh, so this one, I guess, is listed as a bug, and I and we were questioning whether it was really a bug or a feature request. So create, let's say, description. Once a student reviews another student's work and assignments using peer evaluation, that student's review is not available after the, the review period ends. A student does not have a way to view the peer review. So yes, uh, so that was a discussion on the triage call from uh, does that look like a, a desired feature? That, is that the way you would expect it to behave for your students? That after the review is en ending, they should be able to see the reviews from fellow students? Or is it more that you want the instructor to have that control and, and nobody gets to see anything except the instructor after the close date? I think there should be an option for the instructor to allow students to see or not what their peers have, have put in. Hmm. Yeah. So you think there is a use case for both, basically? Yeah, because in some cases, if the instructor wants to review what has been entered by the other students um, before he releases it, now you can do that. The instructor can review the reviews and eliminate bad ones. But if it's automatically made available to the student, some other student could have put in some really nasty comments that are inappropriate. Mm. And the instructor might not ha then have time to uh, prevent that from showing. So instead of an option, are you suggesting more of a workflow where the instructor, ha in a way it is an option, but rather than an upfront option, sort of the end of the peer review, the, the instructor has an option to release uh, peer reviewed comments. That would be up to they would you know that would be like by default maybe it would be off so that the comments don't automatically get released and then if the instructor says yeah I really want them released and I've decided to review them and and clean them up uh, then release them or so you're saying that they should have uh, yeah anyway that was just a workflow that popped in my mind as you were saying that yeah I, um, well, I think I think that workflow exists but I thought that the problem was that they could not. Uh, see the reviews if there were multiple drafts, like if it was a resubmit. I don't know. Like during the resubmit period, they couldn't review the reviews. Um, I got confused. Uh, this is Louisa. I okay. thought there was already such an option in there. Oh. Uh, in, in our instance, uh, if you select peer review, there's a number of options popping up. One of them is allow students to see reviews of their submissions. Does that solve the problem? Or we're talking about different things in this ticket? Say that again, Three, I'm sorry. zero, one, what, two, what, two. What option, what option are you seeing? Allow you... students to see reviews of their submissions. It's an option. Oh. Uh, instructor can check that box. Well, I guess I wonder if uh, I wonder if. It, that allow is there, but but it's just during the review period. And then when the review period's over, they can no longer see those. I wonder if that's mm. what this, this uh, difference is. That's the way the wording of this JIRA appears to be, Neil. So I, I need to do a little bit of testing to understand um, this option. I thought that always I thought it's after the evaluation period ends, the student can see uh, the reviews posted by their peers and the instructor. Hmm. So it's like the feedback of uh, regular assignments. So I'm okay. confused. So it could be that this really is a bug, right? That, that, that that's how you would expect it. That's the question. That's part of the question is if that's how folks would expect it to behave given that I didn't realize that option existed or, uh, as well. So yeah, I might need to do some testing as well. Um, but I guess that's the question is what would you expect that behavior to be that even after the assignments over that the students get to see those reviews? Okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, so it could I, be that that's a genuine bug and that that's what this 30122 is. It's just a bug and you know, yeah, there's an option there, but it's not working as one would expect. That could Got be it. one one option, one of the possibilities. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm I'm personally invested in the peer review feature, so I'm gonna do a little bit of testing on that. I appreciate that. Thank you. No problem. Okay. 
Yeah, thanks, Louisa. That would be super helpful. Okay. Well, thanks for bringing that up, Neil. And, um, uh, and thanks, Louisa, for looking into that. Maybe we could get an update next time, see what you found. Okay, so let's start with some highlights. And I, I feel like I want to start in reverse order so that it's not Neil and me talking first, it's other people. Um, <laughs> because we do a lot of talking, don't we, Neil? <laughs> so, Tiffany, I wonder if you would mind if we started with you um, with some updates about all of the tests and quizzes, energy, and sessions at the conference that you were a part of. Yeah, um, so I saw some really exciting um, work in tests and quizzes. Uh, um, Diego had some really cool um, search uh, capabilities that he's added to allow people to copy uh, questions from old tests and not just from <coughs> existing question pools. Um, there was a lot of discussion and energy around um, you know, sort of what to do with tests and quizzes. Do we want to fix the existing one, which I'm a proponent of, but uh, some folks want to sort of rip it out <clears throat> excuse me, and replace it with uh, something else that, you know, is newer and that we can sort of work from the ground up instead of, you know, trying to work through the bugs that, that exist uh, with the current tests and quizzes. Um, and that's why I, I sort of was proposing this uh, JIRA triage for next week. Um, and um, I saw a lot of exciting work in the accessibility um, groups talking about um, sort of different modular um, things that have been created so that people can create content that's automatically accessible. Um, and uh, also, you know, exciting work there uh, with just working with, um, you know, the accessibility reviewers and stuff to, to get Sakai more accessible. Uh, and speaking of which, um, UVA was just able to um, contribute some funds to the Access the Rally project to um, pay SSB BART for the accessibility review of Sakai 12. So that's really great. And we're very excited that we got to do that. Yeah, that is that is great. Yeah, I see Matt Claire's not here, but yeah, that's uh, that is really great and appreciated. And um, there is a lot of energy around accessibility. We've had you know Illinois State stepping up a lot uh, as well, and uh, just a lot of institutions getting getting involved. Yeah, super super efforts by a lot of folks. Thank you, Tiffany. Was that is there anything else? Um, well, it was really great to meet uh, people that I've been, you know, conversing with uh, online. Um, but uh, yeah, I think, I mean, I don't know how, how far you want me to discuss the Samago stuff or... or yeah, um, well, we can, we, maybe we can come back to it um, if people have questions and, um, and want to dive deeper. Let's see how much time we have after yep. we go around. Thanks. Carrie, were you at the conference? Good, because I didn't think I saw you, and um, I would be very embarrassed if you were there and I didn't know it. <laughs> All right, Sean Platt and or Sean Foster, would either of you um, like to share anything from the conference? Great. Do you have um, a microphone, Sean Platt, or I see you're just in listening mode. So you might, we might want to come back to you if you do have a microphone and could come on the mic. That would be great. You might have to run your audio setup again. Um, there's a headset icon up at the top. Oh, he probably can't hear me right now. Oh yes, that's that's right. 
Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Hey, Sean. Great. Hello. I'm sorry. I I had uh, came in on a, a listening mode only, so. Um, That's okay. Um, but uh, yeah. So um, so yes, I was at the Aperio um, conference in Philly a couple of weeks ago, um, and I had a great time. I think it was uh, as always. The, the conference has been very good. Last I've been going for the last four years. I think my first one was back in Miami. Um, uh, I think, you know, there's a lot of things to choose from. I mean, I'm more of, uh, interested in, in, in strictly the Sakai, uh, part of Aperio. So, um, and, uh, you know, I, it's hard to say, you know, there's so many different things that, that, that happen in a three day span. Um, one of the things that we're looking at, uh, to maybe expand this year is big blue button, which is what we're using now. And um, so I got a chance to talk to that particular vendor. Um, let's see what else. Um, uh, we we are at eleven three. We just upgraded to eleven three uh, May twenty second. Um, okay. So congratulations. Yeah, so far so good. It's been uh, it's been great that we did what we we upgraded when we did uh, alongside as our vendor and. Um, we're, um, you know, so far so good. You know, fortunately, you know, we're in the summer time, so we have a lot of time to go through and, you know, tweak things and fix things that we may have missed. And it's tough to, to do that um, when you just have a dev instance. So um, the feedback's been pretty good, um, but again, very small group. We'll, we won't know until like a days before classes start when they all when all of our faculty come back so um but we're going to try to send out i'm going to try to do some uh some tips and stuff what uh, whatnot this coming uh this over the summer and hopefully they'll either read them or or watch them um Great. let's see uh what was the other uh thing that was that was, was really cool but, oh you know one thing that, that came up just the other day um I, i'm i think some of you know who linda beeth is she's my uh she's our director of the department here of uh, three of us and she was not able to attend Aperio, linda beeth and um we came up with something just the other day that she sent out to the sky community i don't know if anybody saw it um regarding the gradebook ng and What's interesting is that uh, for some reason or what was not placed or put into the grade book was the allowing to change the percentages of the items in a certain category, uh, which you could do in grade book two. So like that feature was removed from grade, uh, grade book NG. Uh, I believe someone did respond and say that it was going to be looked at uh, or it was, uh, back burnered, I guess, last year, something like that. So it just kind of struck us to that that was actually um, uh, had gone away. Um, so anybody have any feedback on that or where that's going to go? Because we have a lot of instructors who use or use that in Gradebook too, um, but now they won't have that. So we're going to be probably end up staying with Gradebook too and not go with NG until that, that piece is added in. I'll stop there in case anybody has any has any comments or whatever. Uh, I, 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 go ahead. You go ahead. Yeah, um, I'd yeah. say that gradebook. Oh, I'm getting an echo. Uh, gradebook NG, I think, was intended mo uh, to have feature parity with gr the original gradebook, not with gradebook two, which was a contrib tool. Yeah. Um, so, and I don't know, I really am not confident. I'm not sure if there are plans to add that feature. I did see that. Uh, it does seem like there, I mean, to me, but I'm also not at an institution and I'm not working with faculty. So I'm not really sure, you know, if um, it's fair for me to comment. Just sort of my own, my own thought process is that you can reproduce that kind of behavior of the weighting by assigning within the category the relative weight of the points of each assignment. That within that category, which to me seems like a lot easier to manage, but that may not be. Again, I'm not uh, working with faculty, so. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, that's you know that is something we're looking at, but again, we're in the same predicament where um, when we have faculty who use it all the time, and then we you know we have to show them something different. But I guess that's part of the course when you upgrade. So 
Um, but generally speaking, I mean, overall, I think that, uh, going back to as far as the conference is concerned, I mean, I'm just, I'm really excited to go every year. It's really the only conference I go to um, for my school. Um, so i um, looking forward to next year and uh, wherever that may be. Um, I will plug uh, Providence, Rhode Island, because uh, there is <laughs> there is three schools in Pro in Rhode Island. I'm I'm calling from Rhode Island. We're in Bristol, Rhode Island, Roger Williams University, and one of my colleagues is on this call as well, Adam Horowitz, and he's from Providence College. And then the third school is URI. So we got, you know, we're the we're the smallest state in the union. So I think it's only fair that we have our the, this conference in the smallest state. Um, <laughs> With this community, you know, relatively a small community, but close knit, you know, we probably have a pretty good majority um, uh, of uh, Sakai instances in the in, was per square mile uh, in the state. So, anyway, there's there's a plug for Rhode Island. Very cool. Not a bad idea. Have to get that that uh, suggestion to the planning committee. Neil. <laughs> Neil, do you happen to know if they picked the location for next year? Uh, as far as I know, the location's not not been picked yet. So okay. uh, I'm not on that specific uh, group that goes and does that research. So I don't have mm -hmm. any uh, anything to add at the moment. But uh, yeah, as soon as I I hear, I'm sure I'm sure it will be announced shortly after they pick it, and hopefully it'll be pretty soon. Smallest yeah, state Providence would be awesome. awesome. Um, thank you so much, Sean. Appreciate sure, your you. your comments and um, plugs for uh, Providence as a great location for an upcoming conference. That would be awesome. Thank you. And so, I mean, I, I, uh, one, other, and one other thing I do, what I'd like to mention overall, I mean. I've been sitting in on these TNLs and other conference calls that you guys have over the last year or two, and you guys really all do a great job. I know it's a small group. I always see the same names up there a lot. So um, kudos to all of you to try to keep this community uh, going and whatnot. And because we were a former Blackboard uh, school, um, so we've been with Sakai about seven or eight years now, and uh, you know, and and such a small department. We don't have developers. We don't have programmers. We don't have pretty much anything. We completely rely on Longsite um, for our back end stuff. So, um, and I'm enjoying using Sakai with our community here at the university than I ever had with um, uh, with Blackboard. So, and every time I hear the word Blackboard, I put up this this cross symbol. You know, we don't talk that here. So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, that's my plug. And um, my apologies for. Uh, going a little bit further than I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. It's all good. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, we're just having some fun in the chat here, um, thanking all the volunteers who contribute so much to the community. And <laughs> we're, you know, we're naming ourselves. And and, <laughs> and, 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 and one more plug too. The, 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 the folks that are they actually did the conference, they set up the conference every year. I just did the um, uh, the survey the other day, and you know, I, I kudos go out to all of the the folks who who actually put up the conference and do all the oh, yeah. back, the back work. That's a doing a conference is a lot of work. I I understand that, and uh, believe me, and uh, we've done it here before for smaller groups, so I understand there's a lot of work involved. So yeah. um, they did a tremendous job, and yeah. they always do. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Sean. Sure. Thank you. Thank you all. Yeah. Uh, Sean Foster, I think that's you. I'm just listening in today. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so, Matt Burgess, do you want to um, share any highlights from the conference? Sure. Hey, everybody. Um, I hope that everybody's having a good week, and it was great to see those of you who were there for the conference. I see Sean is posting a couple things in the chat about some group discussions that he participated in, about Samago, about forums, about the style guide. And the style guide was definitely something that I was really interested in. 
I saw Sean and Jolie Tingen from Duke give a great presentation on their plan for a visual style guide to ensure that Sakai has a uniform look and feel across all of its tools, uniform language, uniform button and window styling, all those little details that really make the design. You know, Jolie included a great quote from Charles Eames, the very famous American designer who talked about how details make the design. And that's something that with a little improvement, we can really bring out in Sakai. And I was really excited to see that presentation and hear about the work that they're starting to do. And I know a lot of schools are looking forward to diving into that. Uh, so that was yeah. one great presentation that I saw. I also saw a really interesting presentation from Landon Phillips, who's an instructional designer from Pepperdine, who really focused on the concept of retention in learning. Rather than a specific technology, he really focused on this concept of retention in learning and talked about different methods that faculty and also instructional designers and support staff and even developers can be thinking about and working with in order to help create an environment where students learn and retain the stuff that they learn better. And I thought that was a really great session. And I'm looking forward to seeing even more sessions like that at future conferences where we talk about not just specific kinds of technology or specific plans, but these important concepts in learning and how technology like Sakai and the various other parts of the Aperio community can get you to those concepts, how they can make those things real. So I thought that was a really cool uh, presentation, and it was really cool to meet Landon and to hear from the Pepperdine folks uh, who were working on that. Let me awesome. see. I also uh, obviously heard a lot about the next generation digital learning environment, the infamous Nygdala. Mm -hmm. Uh, that was something that Malcolm Brown from Educause talked about a lot in his keynote address, um, and I heard people talking about it at all kinds of sessions uh, throughout the week. Um, one thing that I really liked about that was that people are starting to use this metaphor of Legos for the next generation digital learning environment, that it's going to be like Legos where you take these individual things and you put them together, you fit them together to build whatever it is that you want. And it's really customizable. And in one of their lightning talks, one of the designers from Dayton made a comment that they often tell their instructors that the LMS at Dayton, which they call Isidore, is the Lego plate, is the plastic plate that's the base of whatever it is that you build. And then uh -huh. you can fit whatever you want onto that plate. And I think that's a really great metaphor that really embraces something that is, in my opinion, one of the most desirable parts of Sakai, which is its absolute, complete customizability. And so I really like that metaphor, and I anticipate dropping it on some faculty at UVA at some point over the next few months. Yeah, cool. That is a great me metaphor. I love that. I had not heard that session, so thanks for sharing that. That is wonderful. Thank you, Matt. That's really helpful, and I'm excited about this standardization of um, Sakai with the um, labeling and so forth. That I think that it, I, I agree that that is super important and will really make Sakai seem uh, not to, you know, Legos are great, but sometimes you do want some consistency across features. So that that's super important, I think. I'm excited about that. Uh, Louisa, do you want to share anything, for, any highlights from the conference? Oh, yes. Um, um, yes, I have a couple of things. Uh, thank you for giving me the time. Um, OK, so I attended the conference. Uh, but to be honest with you, I was running around with the Atlas winners uh, doing interviews, uh, a number of things. So I missed a lot of sessions. So I'm very happy to have this opportunity to hear from you guys what session you attended and the takeaways. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your experience here. Um, okay, so as I said earlier, I mostly 
um, got involved in Atlas sessions and uh, um, doing a couple other related uh, matters. Um, one thing I participated is the um, showcase reception. Um, so I really like it. So we never did that before for the Atlas uh, uh, community. Uh, so this time we uh, had a table and we had a couple winner there and they uh, talked to a lot of people, uh, showed the details of their projects and we got uh, some very uh, positive feedback and uh, um, it, it's a very different from the uh, Grand Hall session. Um, in the Grand Hall session, I wonder uh, if any of you attended. Uh, this time we were in the big hall. Uh, it was really big. The um, It can host like 500 people. But then um, it, it's a little bit overwhelming for the presenters uh, because eventually uh, not a lot of people ask questions. And in contrast, the, in the showcase reception, uh, it's more intimate. You communicate face to face. So I really like that uh, environment. You know, you got to talk to detail, talk about details, and you um, make this kind of personal connection. And you can ask anything you want. I hope that uh, in the future we could do more like that. Uh, so I'm thinking maybe showcase doesn't have to be uh, just for vendors or uh, one company and or one project. It could be also about other um, uh, uh, projects in development. So, for example, we have the farm project. Um, if, if some of those things are still in development, you are not sure if it's good for a big presentation session. Maybe you can come over to showcase, you talk to people, um, broadcast your ideas and um, bring some together with your audience. Uh, I think showcase is definitely a very cool platform there. Um, yeah. Uh, so the other thing is that I uh, presented the uh, on the last day on the lessons BOF. Uh, so if you guys want, I have a link to my Prezi presentation here. Um, so we had uh, some very nice discussion with the um, uh, with different types of design in lessons. I personally feel that because there are so many new features in lessons, and while you is doing something, uh, Oxford is doing something, and uh, the community sometimes uh, if they don't follow the teaching and learning call, the emails, they don't know what new features are going in there. Um, so I think the BOF session is a nice way to connect people and um, and look at the new features. I didn't know a couple of things that were already got into 12. So I was uh, happily surprised. Um, so, you know, the session was really short. So I'm thinking maybe next step, we can look at 12 and look at the new features that were already added in there, see what we can do about them, or is there any UI changes we can recommend? Um, so maybe um, in the near future, we can do something like that. Because uh, I'm thinking, uh, Neil, you said the 12 is uh, coming out in September sometime, right? So uh, if we could to make those recommendations before September, so maybe we still have time to tweak it, so make it better, um, so that we have uh, uh, very nice lessons in 12. Yeah, so that's yeah. some ideas. Uh -huh. That's a great idea. Yeah, so um, maybe it doesn't fit a teaching or learning, maybe it can be a separate session or something like that. Uh, and I recently been working with Laura, um, let me think, from uh, Notre Dame um, on some of the bug fixes in lessons. So maybe we can also uh, talk about that, you know, bug fixes, uh, enhancement, uh, new features, things like that. Yeah. So yeah. that's some ideas I developed over the last uh, couple weeks. Yep. 
great. Thank you. No problem. My pleasure. Adam, do you want to share some of the highlights that you saw at the conference? Sure. Can you hear me all right? Oh, yeah. Good. I'm working at home from uh, Wi-Fi, so I just wanted to make sure that the connection was good. Uh -huh. Um, yeah. First and foremost, I want to say that um, the um, camaraderie and um, exchange of ideas that happens at the Aperio Conference is just unparalleled. It's one of the highlights of my year, and it's good to always see faces and visit with people who otherwise we only exchange email with or um, participate on these sorts of calls. So it was greatly appreciated, uh, appreciative of uh, seeing all of you there who attended. Um, I am actually going to have to run pick up my son from school in just a moment as it's the last week of uh, his high school. But um, one of the things that I wanted to highlight was um, uh, the work that the Aperio Farm Project does in um, enhancing Sakai for the better. And I was very excited to attend uh, Wilma Hodges' presentation on the Sakai Rubrics Project, which I look forward to potentially having in Sakai 12, because I think that grading rubrics is something that uh, my faculty will uh, definitely grab onto with both hands. I saw that session too, and it was really good, and I'm very excited about that as well. So what I w recall from that session is that um, I believe that what's coming in 12 is going to be uh, rubrics in assignments and grade book possibly, grade book NG. So yeah. That's what I, that's my note, was the plan was to get it into assignments in Gradebook NG for 12. So that, that will be awesome. Great way for um, grading uh, work. Beyond that, I'll also give a shout out for the um, biggest LMS in the smallest state. So please come to Rhode Island. Uh, although, um, <laughs> In truth, I think we want to have it here because Rhode Islanders are fearful to leave the state's borders. <laughs> if it's more than a half an hour, we don't want to go. <laughs> are you afraid you, they won't let you back in? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, we're not building a wall. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> So uh, I think we're getting a very clear message about uh, where we need to have an upcoming conference for sure, and I think that's awesome. <laughs> oh, we don't, you don't go over bridges if you can avoid it. I, okay, very interesting. Something about living in Rhode Island. Got it. I'll have to investigate that some more. Uh, so I too saw the rubrics project and um, let's see, there was quite a bit of conversation as well around uh, marketing, uh, which is, you know, uh, some of us serve on the marketing group. And so of course there were several topics that um, along those lines and conversations that uh, are very exciting, um, including and especially possibly the um, ELI conference as a way to start spreading the word about Sakai in really meaningful ways with, um, you know, it's just, a, I think it can be a great venue for us to um, start letting others in the world know that um, there are some strong Sakai users, that Sakai is a strong and uh, viable LMS. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I, I don't know if I care all that much about market share as a marketing um, concept, but I do care a lot about Sakai and I care about open source and about sharing all you know i think we have an awesome community uh we have an awesome system and i just think this opportunity to share that with others in the higher ed community is uh this is just a great opportunity so i'm i'm hoping 
people are thinking about that and will um, I think the call for proposals for next year's ELI may have already opened or it's opening soon. I'm not sure what the date is. Neil, do you recall or do you know? Um, I would have to look at the ELI site. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not critical, but, but it is. Oh, June, it opens uh, June 26th. So in just uh, oh, next week it opens. Monday. Yeah. yeah, Monday. Great. Okay. So, and I don't know when that closes, probably a few weeks. Um, so be thinking about um, submitting a proposal and let's get a group up there. Um, to talk up Sakai and all the awesome things that that we're doing with it. So that's my one minute stump speech. Neil, do you want to? It's my my turn. Um, yeah. yeah. So to build on that, Trish, I'd say that we're. I'm guessing that presentations that are. I'm get, and I, this is just a guess. Um, from what I saw from last year when I attended Eli, the presentations uh, at Eli are most likely to be accepted if they're about like teaching and learning focused issues, and then kind of sneaking in how Sakai or Perio tools <laughs> help you. So uh, that was yeah, part of the marketing discussion too. Is that it may it may be that a direct assault is not the best. Uh, or most likely approach to work, but uh, something to think about. I am definitely not a marketer, um, although I'm learning a lot uh, being part of the marketing group and trying to think these things through. Um, right. That's a good point. Thanks for mentioning that. Um, so I had a great time at the conference. I think uh, this uh, just, you know, previous conferences, I missed the NY one last year. Uh, previous conferences before that, I've I've put in as much as five proposals. And this year I decided I'm just going to do two. And that worked out really well because uh, then those two got accepted. Then I volunteered to help move the discussion forward and schedule the Sakai forums discussion. And I was not surprised when Dr. Chuck asked me, among others, to uh, participate in the Sakai uh, community update and product update. So uh, so that was kind of fun. And I uh, did a presentation with Trish, uh, Trisha. We co-presented and got some really good feedback on a very silly presentation about uh, open source values and we had music and movement and uh, and funny figures and people seem to like that uh, format. And, <laughs> Surprisingly. <laughs> yeah, we were surprised and we were surprised about the uh, engagement level too, that people really opened up and shared kind of their ideas around um, what types of things resonate for them and, and do or don't work uh, for promoting open source. So uh, that was mm -hmm. fun. and. Uh, um, yeah, it was a really good food. I love the location in Philly. Um, for those of you who yeah. weren't there, we were in a section of Philly that is the historic section. Um, I'm hoping in a few years we can go back to Philly because I thought the location was great. We were close. We were walking distance, like literally like a block away from like three really good restaurants. And then you go to their block and you get two oh, more yeah. really good restaurants. And and it was historic. There was a historic area. Um, so if you had any inclination for uh, touring around, there was some really interesting. Um, opportunities there. And uh, so, yeah, I like the environment. Uh, had a really good time. It went by really fast. I felt like I was busy all the time. Um, I also, the ones that I wasn't presenting on, um, you know, I really enjoyed hearing about the effort, uh, which somebody already mentioned on the the design. What did the, what was that called? Oh, or yeah, the design? The, what was it called, Matt? Or Sean? Sean, I think, you um, I think it was called creating a, a visual language for Sakai. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, creating a visual language for Sakai. Um, so yeah, I had a really, really good time. And you know, my hope is uh, because I'm because of my role, I think of myself, you know, hopefully supporting others, you know, and supporting the community doing great things. And it seemed like that's what's happening. So that's really exciting to watch all the discussion. I get a little bit, uh, you know, uh, uh, overwhelmed with all the incredible ideas and worried about like, do we have enough energy to like rewrite Samago and rewrite forums and rewrite, you know, all these tools. But I think things will sort of um, hopefully just uh, with the uh, farm 
hopefully just, uh, oh, oh yeah, I guess we're out of time. So sorry. Anyway, we're out of time, but hopefully we'll, we'll just, <laughs> that'll just occur naturally, um, you know, as we're exploring yeah. all these ways to improve things. And I'm also excited about the NGDLE concept and how Sakai already supports it and how it might improve. So one of the things for Sakai 12, uh, and I'll wrap up, in five seconds, is that Dr. Chuck is putting in, uh, he is committed to putting in, uh, it's already in lessons, but that idea that you can bring in um, the support for the digital content item IMS standard. So potentially, and he's putting that in the CK editor. And I think what it enables is the possibility of having like an app store kind of thing, almost anywhere from accessible, almost anywhere from within Sakai. So I'm really curious to see what that looks like um, and um, if there's ways of doing implementations. So, Sean wrote, yeah, it's time to update these old tools. Yeah, I guess yeah. so. Yeah. So, sure. I could say more, but I, I think we're, we're out of time, really. Yeah, we are. We're at time. So, everybody, thank you so much. And, uh, you know, it's just this community uh, enriches all of our abilities to support teaching and learning at our own inst institutions. And this conference was a great experience. So. Thank you again, and we will see you next time. You are